got all the clues. Rivets, twist, stains, tape, well, there's a mystery to this all. An adventure is unfolding, so why not get involved? Come on, read all about it. ideas yet? You? Very funny, Otto. Yeah, it's not our fault there's nothing to write about. You should have shut down the Chronicle for the summer. That is impossible. Your readers were promised a summer edition of the Chronicle. We know, Feta. But it's going to be a very dull edition. We only have a few things ready. Our readers are still sending in stories about Harriet Hill. So we're printing one of those. Alex sent us a long letter about summer camp. That's going on the second page. And on the back page, we're having a poetry contest. And we're asking our readers to write an adventure poem of their own. So far, it sounds like excellent chronicle material. The front page. See, we haven't anything to print on it. No major story, no headline, nothing. I know. How about a big one-word headline? <laughs> and then we'll write a list of all the things you can't do in Herbertville in the summer. That is not a valid suggestion. I was only joking, Feta. There must be something happening in Herbertville. Guess I'll just have to look a bit harder. See you later. Okay. We'll try to think of another story while you're gone. We have to think of something. What's this? Write a detective story? Where did this come from? People might enjoy reading a good mystery story. You bet. Especially in the summer, when it's too hot to do anything else. But where did that piece of paper come from? And there's lots of things to do in the park. Here's a list of band concerts. We can print that. And on Saturday, the summer fair starts with rides and everything. Great. And they're having equestrian events, too. What are equestrian events? An equestrian event is a horse show featuring jumping contests. I know. I was wrong. There's lots of things happening in Herbertville. And they're even having special summer classes at our school. First time ever. Tomorrow, I'm going to find out more about them. Congratulations. You have gathered excellent material for the summer edition. Thanks, Feta. That's great. I've started working on a detective story. It's about four friends, the Lockwood Gang, and they're visiting England on vacation. And while they're exploring this old castle, they get caught by these bank robbers who are hiding there. It 
sounds terrific. Don't stop now. Chris, my notes. I left them on the counter, and now they're pinned up on the board. How did that happen? Something very strange is going on here. I found this detective story idea on the board after you left. Did you put this up here? That's what I thought. Maybe we'd better check the transport controls. It is getting late. You must be on your way. We can check the transporter tomorrow, Chris. Yeah. Okay, come on, I'll tell you the rest of the story on the way home. Bye. So the gang's locked up in the dungeon, and before Penny can rescue them, the bank robbers catch her and try to throw her into the moat. Then what? I don't know. That's as far as I got. But the gang saves her at the last moment. How? They're trapped in the dungeon. They escape. How? I don't know. That doesn't make much sense. Hmm, I guess not. Excellent, excellent. So far, this story deserves a passing grade. The name is Weatherby, Ernest Weatherby, but you may address me as Sir. A character from a book. A very interesting idea, but I'm afraid you're in for a disappointment. I'm not a book character, just an ordinary ghost. I see. You insist that ghosts do not exist. Therefore, I do not exist. Therefore, if I do not exist, I cannot possibly be here, in the coach house. Therefore, if I am not here, you must be having this conversation with yourself. Obviously. Hmm. Oh, adjust anything you like, but do stop chattering and let me get on with the story. Aha. A fundamental mistake. This story wasn't thought out in detail. There's no indication that he's thought this story through to the end. He seems to be writing without a plan. And you can't expect a story to work out unless it's planned in advance. Come on, Otto. You don't expect me to believe all this nonsense about a ghost. Hmm, sure you are. Hi, Nin. Otto says he spent all night talking to a ghost. A ghost? Did it wear a long white sheet and go, woo? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Weatherby, that doesn't sound very ghost-like. Thena, did you see this ghost too? My circuits remained closed throughout the night. Too bad. What did you and this ghost talk about, Otto? <laughs> the ghost told Otto that I forgot to plan my story. That's why I didn't know what to do next. And of course the ghost solved the problem. Naturally. Hmm. <laughs> But it's a good idea, Lynn. I'll just have to change the opening a bit. Add a paragraph to show that many people think the castle is haunted. 
then when the ghost appears to let the others out of the dungeon, it will be a surprise. But it will still make sense because the ghost was supposed to be there all the time. I agree. It's a good idea. But I still don't believe Anna's ghost. Ghosts are scary. They don't appear just to give lessons in story writing. Where are you going? To school to get some more information about the summer classes for the Chronicle. Want to come? Okay. Oh, I checked the transporter controls earlier, and they're all correctly positioned. So whatever was happening yesterday wasn't caused by the transport. Maybe it was Otto's ghostly friend. <laughs> <laughs> Neither do I. Your imagination circuits must be working overtime. Having a little trouble, are you? Well, really, Otto. There's not much point in being a ghost if everybody knows you exist. Now, come on, cheer up. <laughs> Lynn, look. Ernest W. Weatherby, principal, 1910 to 1931. So what? That's the name of Otis Ghost, isn't it? Yes, but... And he's wearing old-fashioned clothes, just like Otto said. And being a teacher would explain why he was interested in my story. Yes, but a ghost? It's impossible. Nothing. We should have known it was just Otto playing a joke on us. Well, 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 Mr. Anderson and Miss Davis. Isn't it a little late to be out wandering the streets? Mr. Weatherby? You didn't answer my question, Anderson. Sorry, sir. Are you really a ghost? Don't you believe your own eyes, Miss Davis? Perhaps I should walk through a wall for you. Mr. Weatherby, why are you in our coach house? Because I'm bored. I detest the summer. When school is over, I'm all alone, left to wander the halls by myself. You live in our school? My school? You forget. I was the first principal. What? How did you become a ghost? Well, I've never really been quite sure. Very few people become ghosts, I do know that. In fact, it's taken me nearly 50 years to learn the secret of becoming visible. I still can't manage it very well during the day. What did you do all that time? Well, when the first school burned down and they built the new school, I moved in just to keep an eye on everything. Year after year, I watched the students come and go. For instance, I remember when you could hardly read or write. Your grammar and spelling were atrocious. And lazy, why, you were always thinking up excuses not to do your homework. And then, quite suddenly, you began to show an interest in reading. It was the Chronicle. A remarkable change. Now you're a very promising student, just like Anderson here. That's why I've decided to move into the coach house to help you improve your skills. Move into the coach house? For the summer. Just think, your very own private personal tutor. And such an interesting one. For the whole summer? Well, naturally. It'll be most enjoyable. Just like school. We'll start tomorrow. Now, don't be late. <laughs> 